Hello Blazers, it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. How guys doing today? Welcome to a brand new video. In today's video, guys, we're gonna be talking about something that it just just leaves me speechless, to be honest with you guys. You see, guys, there are some things that are just understood by everybody. You know, there are some truths that we hold self-evidence. For example, the fact that there's a global pandemic going around right now, uh, the coronavirus, and everybody knows about it, right? Pretty much every single country on Earth is taking precautions and realizes that there is a threat and does everything to prevent the coronavirus from spreading everybody's doing a good job and everybody's doing their best to prevent the virus right the, yeah that, that is correct everybody but belarus <laughs> yes guys the beautiful country of belarus russia's brother one of the biggest and most important post-soviet states a country located in eastern europe belarus uh, does not think that the coronavirus exists and in particular the belarusian president alexander lukashenko uh, also known as Batka doesn't think that the coronavirus is real, he thinks it's a hoax and uh, there are zero measures taken in the country to prevent it. And you guys might be wondering right now, how does this make any sense, right? Every single post-Soviet country pretty much that you could think of, Ukraine, Russia, Kazakhstan, whatever, everybody has measures that they have employed to stop the spread of the coronavirus and of course the presidents of those countries realize that the virus actually exists. How could this happen that Belarus is the one country that does not think that the coronavirus is a real thing? Well, we need a little bit of context sex, okay? Because I don't know if you guys are very familiar with the political situation in the country of Belarus. Now, before we get into this video, I would like to tell you guys that this video is sponsored once again by me. I'm once again asking you guys to buy my YouTubes. <laughs> once again, YouTubes are these little YouTube figurines that you can buy as a little souvenir for yourself and also support your favorite creators. I've designed this whole thing myself. It's pretty cute. It's pretty awesome. The, the build quality is insane on these things. I've put a lot of thought into this thing. If you guys buy it, it would actually a lot support my channel a lot. If if you guys want to get one of these for yourself, you could go to the link down in the description to the YouTube's website and you can buy one of these that have free worldwide shipping, so it's pretty cool. Now, let's get into the video. You see guys, Belarus is basically like Russia, but uh, worse. <laughs> it's very similar to Russia in the sense that, you know, the freedom of speech is very suppressed in Belarus and the opposition is being suppressed, like the opposition barely exists in Belarus. It starts to appear now, but we're gonna mention it later. Belarus is basically like hardcore Russia. If you guys thought that Russia is harsh and its opposition and if Russia is like uh, has no freedom of speech or freedom of demonstrations or protests or whatever well the truth is that on paper we do and Belarus really doesn't have any. Now here's the thing, let's for a second talk about the president of Belarus Alexander Lukashenko. This guy with that beautiful mustache is like a legend, he's very famous across all the entirety of the post-soviet scape because he's literally a living meme he's just said a lot of funny things over the years and he's kinda got this reputation of like being a very simple like villain type guy, very simplistic type dude, MUZIK! And the thing is that Alexander Lukashenko is like uh, what Putin wishes he was, I think. You see, yes, Putin has been in power for like for the last 20 years, and he's gonna be in power for 20 more years after, you know, the new constitution changes that are basically removing the term limits for him. But here's the thing, Putin has to go through all of this red tape and to like pretend that he's a democratic leader all the time. First of all, he was not even the first president of Russia, we had Boris Yeltsin before him. And then there was also Medvedev, who served as the president of Russia for one term, which was kind of a decoy for Putin to come in power after him again. So you know, Putin has been in power for like the last 50 years, but he has to go through all this bullcrap to stay. Lukashenko though, he's not like that. He's an absolute chad who's literally been the president of Belarus since 1994. Uh, to this day. Yeah, he literally became the first president of Belarus, so there was no guy before him. After Belarus became an independent country, he became the first president of Belarus in 1994 and is still in that position to this day, in 2020. That is 26 years of uninterrupted presidency. I mean, come on. Based, uh... You guys understand what I'm saying, right? Putin wishes he was this guy. Now, of course, again, I'm leaving out some details because, yes, Belarus, just like Russia, uh, on paper, is a democratic country with democratic elections. But in Belarus, it's just like uh, every single election, Lukashenko wins with like 95% of votes every single time. So it is a democratic country on paper, so they still run elections. And actually, in Belarus, there is currently an upcoming presidential election. It's going to be in August. And Lukashenko 
Lukashenko is preparing for his election and he's chosen a very strange strategy uh, of denying the coronavirus. So here's the thing you've got to understand. In Belarus right now, there are no quarantine measures. There is no self-isolation measures. They are not canceling any public events and stuff like that. So for example, last month on the 9th of May, it was the day of victory, signifying the victory of the Soviet Union over Nazi Germany in 1945. And every single year on the 9th of May, Russia throws a huge parade, you know, on the Red Square and everything. Well, this year in Russia, this was actually canceled because of the coronavirus pandemic. And it's like the first year since, you know, 1945 or whatever, when we did not have a victory parade. Well, in Belarus, they didn't cancel it. They just went through with it. And here's, by the way, where my friend uh, Boulder Baycroft comes in. Thank you so much for this footage because he actually uh, was in Belarus at the time of that victory parade. And he was able to actually go to Belarus because they have no restrictions on the because of the pandemic. And he was able to record all of that stuff. Sorry, guys. Uh, random camera change. My parents came home and I had to eat my ass out of the living room. Planning to move out pretty soon though, so that'll be fine. Anyway, so yeah, there are literally zero restrictions in Belarus right now, and let's actually hear out what uh, Lukashenko himself has to say about the coronavirus pandemic and what are his thoughts on this entire thing. They're pretty entertaining. I don't understand. Лучше, чем спорт, особенно лед, холодильник этот. Yeah, Lukashenko has an incredible big brain. You know, you don't see any viruses flying around. You don't see anything flying around. That means that the virus doesn't exist. Also, uh, yeah, playing hockey. If you play hockey, you're essentially in the freezer, which, you know, will kill all the virus. So... Play hockey, Belarusians, and nothing's gonna happen to you. This is ahead of a major country with over 9 million residents, by the way. Надо у костра посидеть, погреться, подышать этим дымом, гарью и прочее. Сливочное масло надо сейчас есть. Кажется, жиры помогают легким бороться с вирусами. Водкой надо не только руки мыть, но, наверное, в день 40-50 грамм. You see, guys, the reason it's so funny is probably maybe not everybody who's like from the, an ex Soviet country uh, or has like a Russian grammar or whatever would understand this, but Lukashenko is basically, he speaks like a your boomer granddad, okay? He's like your boomer granddad who looks on the internet, he's like, Hey, grandson, I've heard that if you drink vodka every single day, you won't get any coronavirus. I read on the internet. Or like your grandma calls you or something and she's like, Hey, grandson. Yeah, I've just seen them t on, on the TV. They said that if you uh, eat a lot of butter right now, you will not get the coronavirus. So, you know, go buy some butter, my grandson. They said so on TV, so it must be true. I think if, like, Russians are watching me right now, they know what I'm talking about. It's like, every, literally every single Russian grandma is like that. Or every single Russian grandpa is like that. Russian grandpas are like that because they just want to drink. So, uh, <laughs> they have to create all these uh, justifications for them to drink vodka. And they're like, yeah, uh, I saw on, on the internet that uh, drinking vodka helps to uh, cure the coronavirus and uh, makes you more immune. Pastopchki. But what's funny about Lukashenko is that he's a head, he's a president of a massive country and he acts like your boomer granddad or your boomer grandma. It's just so surreal, I just cannot even explain it. If you go to the sauna and not only wash your hands, but also wash your hands in 100 grams, then as a person who doesn't drink, who doesn't propagate it, I will be able to understand it normally, at least until the day of victory. Кроме хоккея, бани и водки, у Лукашенко есть еще одно лекарство. Сейчас на селе приятно смотреть по телевизору. Люди на тракторе работают, никто не говорит про вирусы. Там трактор вылечит всех, полю всех лечит. Like, honestly, guys, this guy is like a dictator. He's corrupt as hell. But honestly, I find him so adorable at the same time. You can see that he's cl he clearly doesn't give a fuck anymore. Like, he's been the president of his country for like 30 years. He knows nothing will happen to him. He's literally not even prepared to text or anything. He's just sitting there and like winging it. He's like, oh, yeah, coronavirus. Yeah, make sure to, uh, you know, visit the sauna, drink some vodka, and uh, uh, sit around at the campfire, guys. Uh, that, will, that will fix everything. <laughs> and there's like governmental workers sitting in front of him, you know, all these officials. And they know if they disagree, they're gonna be basically fired or like gulagged. And they're sitting there like, yeah, he's spitting facts. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's so bizarre. Just like this system's created in these post-Soviet states that allow this level of unprofessionalism to, to thrive. It's just insane. It's honestly, it feels like this is a parody, but this is real life. And obviously, this is horrible, right? So, you know, and the thing is that what kind of amazes me the most is the way that there's a whole bunch of insane people praising this decision. Like, look at some of these comments. Great job, guys. Keep, do keep doing you. Batka, which is the nickname of Lukashenko, I love you as a president. Good job, Belarus. Hi, from Russia. <laughs> I'm from Kazakhstan. We've been quarantined and everything fine. Uh, we don't just don't have money and we want to eat. I'm very, very jealous. Lukashenko is a nice, simple man. Lukashenko is so funny. The most competent ruler in all of Europe. These people are fucking insane. <laughs> and the thing is that it seems like Lukashenko doesn't care, not just on the, uh, on the level of, okay, you know, whatever. I'm a dictator, you know, I don't care. My people are gonna get the coronavirus. It's fine. I just want to keep the factories going and potatoes growing, whatever. Right, but the thing is, actually, Lukashenko even meets all of his governmental officials in person. So he has governmental meetings in person, and you know, there's no masks involved, there's no uh, social distancing involved whatsoever. You know, even in Russia, Putin, for example, actually does like distanced. Uh, meetings with governmental officials. They literally get in, like a Zoom call and talk about ruling the country or whatever. Like, this is what's going down. And Putin, like, sits in front of a laptop and everything and talks to uh, all of the governmental officials via the internet. So they're doing a lot of great social distancing. Lukashenko, though, absolute chat. No, he, he doesn't think the coronavirus exists. He makes these people come to his office, no masks involved. Just absolute, absolute alpha. Now, here's the thing. Even though there is no quarantine, even though there is no self-isolation in Belarus, people in Belarus is saying that people are getting sick, people are worried, uh, you know, people also were panicking at some point, just like in basically every other country. And so what's going on in Belarus actually is that the government is not providing hospitals with masks or anything at all. Like you could talk about how maybe like in America or other countries they're not providing enough masks, well it's still better than Belarus where they, the government doesn't provide anything. Uh, to the people right now because the coronavirus doesn't exist apparently. And so currently in Belarus, actually, uh, people are literally gathering together and uh, putting funds together, putting money together and providing uh, masks for like hospital workers and for like old pe elderly people and stuff like that. Stuff that the government should do, uh, regular people have to do now. They have to form their own uh, humanitarian organizations to do that stuff, which is ridiculous. And so the thing is that amongst all of this, uh, the next presidential election to Belarus is coming up and this is where it gets interesting is because the Belarusian opposition actually uh, surfaced. People are seeing that Lukashenko and his government is basically incompetent, you know. People, for the past 26 years, of course people maybe had their gripes with the Lukashenko governments, right? Just like, you know, with Putin and Russia, etc. But Belarus is not Russia. It's a much more stable country, you could say. They don't wage war. They really don't have any geopolitical aspirations. You know, Russia's idea is to be a superpower, to influence politics all around the world. Belarus is a country that is under influence of Russia. And Russia is like, you know, annexing Crimea, you know, doing stuff in Syria, all that. Belarus is not doing anything. They're mingling with Russia a little bit, they're mingling with Europe a little bit, and they try to keep that balance of mingling between Russia and Europe, and that's really it. So unlike Ukraine or Russia, Belarus has uh, for a long time been pretty stable economically and politically. Now though, once the coronavirus pandemic hits, and the people are seeing that the government is not doing anything about it, and all Lukashenko can do is talk about your crap about how you need to drink vodka and eat butter in order to fix the coronavirus people are like maybe we maybe we don't need him anymore and what's insane is that in the past few weeks in belarus which is a country that cracks down very heavily on political opposition and basically allows no oppositional demonstrations or anything like that there's been a few quite large oppositional demonstrations in belarus and there's actually a uh, a whole bunch of oppositional candidates that are trying to run in for the presidential election and they actually can really rival lukashenko the only problem is that definitely uh they would not be registered as official candidates just like Navalny in Russia, for example, who's like a big oppositional figure who wanted to participate in the 2018 presidential election, but the government just did not let him, period. Very much similar things are going to happen in Belarus, and I don't think it's, this is the end of Lukashenko or anything by any means, but definitely what this means is that, you know, the times of Lukashenko are coming to an end. It's not come to a boiling point yet, you know, it's not at the peak of the uh, social unrest, and I think probably during this election, you know, Lukashenko will still get a pass, the Belarusian people will let it slide, and I, I think I, I'd give Lukashenko maybe five, ten more years 
and then who knows what's gonna happen. What I'm trying to say is that the outlook of the majority of the Belarusian people is being changed right now due to seeing how the how incompetent the government is during the coronavirus pandemic is doing a lot of a lot of damage to the image of Lukashenko and his government. So yeah, I think it's pretty damn interesting. It's just really bizarre to see how much the coronavirus has, has affected politics in a lot of different countries and just seeing how Lukashenko and uh, the Belarus government does not think that the coronavirus is real is just some of the most bizarre stuff I've ever seen in my entire life. It seems like it should be a parody, but it's not. Anyways guys, that is pretty much all I wanted to talk about in today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you guys did, please make sure to slap that like button in this video. Also guys, if you want to support my channel, once again, please make sure to support my Patreon link down in the description. I would gladly appreciate it. Also guys, once again, you can buy my YouTube to support me. Thank you guys so much for watching this video today, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.